Now for our admin user, we need to make him a member of some administrative groups. So we will double click on it. And we'll say member of, and we're going to hit add, and then we'll go to advanced, and we'll say, we'll search for admin. All right, there's administrators. Okay, and then we'll do advanced again, and we'll search again for under domain. And we can see here that there's a domain admins group right here. Okay, and then we'll click OK, and we'll click OK. So now this user, this admin user, has some administrative privileges member of administrative groups whereas these two users are just domain user groups now that we have some users here what I can do is I can open up let's see here let's go to our server Microsoft Exchange server there it is Exchange Server Management Console so we'll open that up Okay, we'll open this up. Okay, that took a few minutes to get started, but now we have it um, running here. Um, right off the bat, right from the front, I can um, update my data here to see my organization summary. I always like to do that, so let's do that just right off the top before we create our user. We'll do that. We'll say immediately gather our organizational health data and collect. It'll collect information about our exchange server. Okay, finish. And now you can see we have some data here about our um, server, how many databases we have. We have one database and then we can server summary. You can see here total servers one Exchange 2010 server, how many mailbox servers, how many access servers, how many hub transport servers, 111, that's what we want. And then if we look under recipients, you'll see here we have, um, we only have a few mailboxes, user mailboxes, one. So that's what we want to change. So what we'll do is we'll go to recipient configuration, we'll click on mailbox, and we will create some new mailboxes. Now you can just right click and do it here or you, there's a button right here on the right hand side. So we'll use the button on the right hand side and choose mailbox type. A user mailbox, a room mailbox, equipment or linked mailboxes. Typically we're going to make a user mailbox and create mailboxes for existing users and then we'll add them here. And we'll see here there's admin so we'll click OK and then we can add student, click OK, and then we'll click add Tracy user and click OK. And now we can hit next. And an alias will be automatically generated for each new mailbox. I'm going to pick that since I created three users and I'm just going to have the defaults here. Um, and hit next and click new and then we'll see here the progress for each one all completed so now we have three mailboxes which we can use to send um, email from for testing out our mail server okay now that we have our users and our mailbox users we want to start thinking about how to talk to our um, server and make sure that we have ports open on our server for connecting to mail. Now I've created a little notepad document here. These are the ports that we want to make sure are available on our server so that we can um, receive mail and send mail. So um, we've got POP3 here and this is for um, delivering mail and IMAP for delivering mail and SMTP is for sending mail from a client to the server um, and then we're going to do let's say some web mail so we want to make sure that our server is available on port 80 and then here are some secure 
um, connections that we can have if we're going to do uh, secure uh, mail services. So for SMTP, IMAP, IMAP4, and POP3 secure SSL. So these are the ports that we want to test. So let's test our server right now. We'll just do a open up a command prompt and I'll make this slightly bigger. Um, properties, font, okay we'll make that a little bit bigger and what we'll do is we'll say netstat dash a for all n for um, no names for port numbers and then we'll pipe to more and we'll see what we're how what ports our server is listening on and you can see that we're listening on port 25 and that's good because that's our um, port for um, SMTP we're listening on port 80 and you can see here uh, 443 we need 110 for pop 3 and I don't see port um, 110 here I see 443 for um, secure HTTPS but I don't see ports uh, 995 and 993 so um, we're gonna need to open those up and we'll look once more at our document again so let's start with opening up ports 110 and um, ports 143 okay so I'll close this and I'll go to start administrative tools my firewall utility inbound rules and Let's see here. Here's a Microsoft Exchange. You can see here that allow. And what we can do is even before we do this, we can see if um, just by changing our mailbox server, if that opens up the ports. Let's try that. So what we'll do is we'll go to server configuration and we'll go to client access and we'll go to POP3 and IMAP4. And we'll go to, um, and so POP3 and IMAP4 are there. But actually, to open these up, we're going to have to, to activate them, to activate these services, we have to do it from the services utility. So we'll open up the services utility. And we'll scroll down to Microsoft Exchange. There's IMAP4. So double click on that and we'll change it to automatic and then we'll start it. So that service is going to be started now. Okay, click OK. And then there's POP3. So we'll double click on that and we'll change it from manual to automatically. So it automatically starts and then we'll start it up. Okay, so we'll click OK. And now what I'll do is I'll run another netstat command. This time what we'll do is we'll look for find 110. All right. We'll hit enter. We'll see that we're now listening on port 110. So I didn't actually need to open it up in my firewall and then we'll do 143 and hit that and you can see that we're also listening on port 143 now so it doesn't look like I need to open that up manually on my firewall because now it's been open probably because of the exchange rules that are allowing it to go through I might be wrong about that but I'll just minimize that for right now all right so now we're listening on those two ports. So we've turned on POP3 and IMAP4 through our services utility.